Uranium One is a Canadian-based company with its primary listing in Toronto and secondary listing here on the JSC in South Africa. It made a record revenue of $530 million as production increased in the 2011 financial year. The firm, which produces uranium at mines in Kazakhstan, Australia and the United States, reported a net earnings of $88 million. That's compared with net losses of $154 million for 2010. Nice turnaround for earnings. Uh, Paul, firstly, your thoughts on the fact that we saw a strong turnaround in earnings for the company. And of course, mm. Fukushima comes to mind here. Mm. Look, it's an uh, interesting story, very interesting story. It started out as Canadian. Then it was acquired by and had a strong South African flavor because Neil Froneman, you know, previously referred to as the Don King of the junior mining business, took it on and built this global company. He renamed it Uranium One, great brand. And it was in that period from 2005 to 2008 where everybody assumed the world was just going to go on growing and there was China. There was a great future that was sketched for nuclear power in general. And this company was going to dominate and they were going to be multi-country producers and they were developing a big production site out near Carltonville, South Africa. So it attracted a lot of South African investors. An enormous and almost cataclysmic disaster. It fell from 100 Rand to 9 Rand a share in the crash of 2008 and it has never really recovered. Although at its current share price level, it's a substantial operation. I mean, it has a market cap, as you point out there, of 22 billion Rand. But it has lost its South African roots. It has a Canadian CEO now. The mines are mostly in Kazakhstan. And the commodity price, the uranium price, remains depressed. And before we get into the, the outlook for prices, <laughs> let's just focus in on the fact that they have had a strong turnaround in terms of volumes being produced, up by 44% yep. to 9.9 .9 million pounds in 2011. They project uh, to, to, ex uh, to increase that to 11.6 uh, million pounds this year right. at a cash cost of $19 uh, per pound. And that compares to an NYSE-listed uh, uranium producer, Cameco, which uh, produces at 25 dollars per pound. So they're very cheap producers when you look at their cost side of the business. Why, why is their model so good? I just think that they've, uh, you know, when you venture into places like Kazakhstan, uh, there are disadvantages and there are advantages. And I think that uh, if you have the, the, the courage to do that and you can set up a business and run it uh, without any political interference, then uh, there are these assets out there. Uh, some of the grades overseas are much higher than anything that we found locally in Namibia um, by the likes of uh, Paladin and other um, uranium companies. So, um, you know, it's just a case of finding the right projects and obviously the uh, uranium price has rebounded to a degree um, post Fukushima and I think that's uh, added, contributed to the, to the the good results we've seen for 2011. You've also got this supply demand dynamic that's been playing out because uranium prices have been depressed. That hasn't incentivized the further production. Mm. And then on the, on the other hand, you've still got nuclear power plants, uh, power plants mm. being made, despite the fact that, say, Germany and Japan have turned against them, obviously Japan. Mm. But here in South Africa, we're a country that's focused on nuclear power in the mm. future. So, so what are your thoughts on the prospect for that price going forward? It's sitting at $51 right now. Yeah, look, that is fairly flat. I mean, there was a time when it was much, much higher when there was this massive global program going on. As you correctly point out, the Japanese now hate nuclear power for obvious reasons. They shut down their remaining nuclear reactor. France is still very big there. Germany sort of doesn't want to do any more. The US is ambivalent. On the one hand, they say they don't want new nuclear power stations, but they've also passed laws that make it impossible to build a new coal-fired power station because of greenhouse gases and other pollutants. So and they're also clamping down on, on shell gas and the fracking right the now. The trouble the is, there's all that extra sh uh, sh shale gas and that means in a sense that natural gas is getting cheaper and that's probably what's going to take up the slack. So I'm not hugely positive about the prospects for new nuclear power stations and I'm not hugely positive about the prospects for the uranium price. I think it's going to sort of drift around there. Remember also there's spent fuel. So as stuff comes out either from weapons or from old power stations it can be re refined. So I think the fact that they're doing better is more a function, as Warren says, of having cleaned up their operations, having canned a whole lot of projects that were more marginal, focusing on their high-grade mines in Kazakhstan and so on. Kazakhstan's actually not such a bad place. Everybody associates Kazakhstan with the movie Borat, 
<laughs> and thinks that it's just the worst country in the world, but it's I not. I love that movie. <laughs> I love the movie too, but the truth <laughs> is that's not what Kazakhstan looks like. It's entirely more civilized than that. Okay, yeah. But with all due respect, Paul, I mean, who cares about the US, the e, uh, Germany and Japan anymore? All the action is going to be in China and India. And China, for one, as I understand it, has uh, plans in place to build 50 nuclear power stations at the moment. Uh, and if I remember correctly, they, they were looking to supply in the region of about one gigawatt of... Uh, of new power this year in the form of nuclear power stations. So is the story, with all due respect to the Japanese, uh, they can decide <laughs> whatever they want to do is Whatever is they fun. want to do, it's not going to have uh, an impact on demand going forward. Yeah. Demand, demand is going to be driven by these Asian giants. Let's look at the stock price, 22 yeah. Rand 60, hot or not, almost 30% up this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting story depending on, I guess, your outlook for, for, for nuclear. And, and uh, we, well, I, I seem to be quite bullish on the um, on the prospects for nuclear, so on a, on a long-term view, I'd find value in the share. But uh, at the moment, it looks about about fair priced, fairly priced. Hot or not? So mm, not hot. For me. Look, I think it's a fair observation, but the price of the commodity, the uranium three hundred eight, you know, fifty dollars a pound, going nowhere. I think if the outlook in China and all that was that positive, it would start to creep higher. And it hasn't. So, well, you know, it, but it could. So anyway, for me, not hot enough, having been up at those levels, too uh, risky to be in these single commodity type players.